Hello, welcome to my video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do interactive plotting of Earth engine data using the GE Map Python package. So in order to follow this tutorial, you need to install this package on your local computer. If you haven't done so, you can watch my other tutorial on how to install the package. And after that, you can come back and uh, follow through. So first of all, I just implemented this uh, interactive protein this morning. So uh, you, you, you will need to update the package. You, the, if you already installed this before, you need to update the package to 0.06. Um, previous version um, would not have this function. If you're using the pip to install previously, you can use this line of code pip install hyphen u GE map to upgrade the package. If you use conda, then you can use conda install and then specify the uh, the, the package version uh, and then you should be able to install the latest one. Okay, so let's get, get started. After you have installed the package, then you can use a conda list just to make sure that you have the latest one, 0.06 uh, version 0.06. So if you see from here, Right, 0.06, then we are good to go. So all we need to do is just type Jupyter Notebook and it's open um, a Jupyter Notebook. If you already download the repo from my GitHub, then so it's going to be under here, the example notebook examples. And from here, you will see a lot of uh, animations. So for today, we're going to introduce this one here, the latest one interactive protein of Earth engine data without writing code. So this is the short animation, but I'm gonna show you a longer version. And in here, we're going to use this notebook, um, here, uh, protein.ipymb. So you can just download this one to your computer and then open using Jupyter Notebook. So we're going to examples, notebooks, and protein, okay. So first I'm going to just clear all the outputs. And as you can see from here, um, there are not many lines of code, so pretty simple and straightforward. First of all, we need to in import the Earth engine package and also the GE map package. And this one just create a default interactive map. And then, so the map, this is just display the map, that's it. Let me maximize the, the window. Okay, so you can see from here, this is the interactive uh, base map. You can click this one right now because we haven't added any Earth engine data layer here. So this drop down this right now is empty. Um, there's no nothing, nothing you can do. So this is the base map. Uh, the background here is the open street map. But we use the uh, Google map in here. So let me uncheck this one. Next, let's add some Earth engine data. Okay. And so the first a few lines of code, we are trying to add a uh, lens 7. So if you see from here, lens 7, this is the image ID, uh, uh, five-year five average of lens data. And then we select uh, six bands. Uh, we don't use the uh, band, basically band six is index five. So we don't have index five here because it's a thermal band. We just want to use the multi-spectral band in here. And this one is the lens set, uh, we, what we are trying to visualize. But, is the symbology. So we're trying to use the force color composite and then we add the layer to the map. Okay, so lens set seven. And then this is the visual visualization. And this one is the layer name. So what is going to show up here uh, under the layer control. Similarly, we are trying to add a hyperspectral data. So a Hyperion. This one is different. This one is a, an image collection. So basically it's a bunch of images together. And then we just filter by dates, for example, 2016 to 2017. And this one is how we are going to visualize the data. And then we pass this one in here. Keep that in mind, the, uh, the protein two can work with both image and image collection. So depending on how many spectral band is going to, uh, you, you, you going to have, uh, it doesn't matter. So all we need to do is just pass in the visual collection in here. And then later you're going to use whatever you use in the add layer, this parameter will be used. Um, so let's just execute. And 
you should see this one right now added to the map. So if you zoom zoom out, this is the uh, the lens set is for the entire globe, but the hyperspex or Hyperion is just um, it's not global coverage. So you see the, this uh, strip here. These are all the Hyperion data set. If you see the layer control right now, you will see those two layers already being added to the map in here. So now we can just activate the use plotting. And once you activate this one, it's going to show you uh, the layer. And each time you can only do the, pl uh, the plotting for one layer. So for example, for the first time, we're going to use this one. Now all we need to do is just click on the map. And you should be able to see this one. We can maximize if you want, right? So this is just, you can click anywhere. This one will be automatically updated. So for example, if you click water, uh, you will see the spectral signature is going to be different. Okay. So this one is the title. By default, it's using the layer name, but you can also customize. I'm going to show you later how to customize. And so for example, you click anywhere. Uh, and also keep in mind, this is interactive. So I can I can zoom in and zoom out of the uh, the plot. And this one by default also use the, the name of each band. So B1 all the way to B7, okay. Similarly, we can do for hyperspectral. So we're gonna use the Hyperion. And then if you click somewhere here, because there's no data. So you will, you will see this one here at the bottom, uh, bottom right here, no data for this uh, click location. But if you, uh, if you zoom in, and if you click on where you can see the Hyperion data, if you click, then you should be able to see this one. So if you click any, anywhere, right, you will see this. So this one by default is a line plot and with points, it looks very crowded. We can also customize just to show, for example, line or you can see uh, using other types. I'm going to go back to here. Now, uh, if the default one uh, does not look good for you, you can customize. So there are all kinds of ways you can customize. There's a function called set plot options. All you need to do is just hit tab and then a shift tab on your keyboard. Then from here, you should be able to see the signature. For example, egg uh, marker cluster. The sample scale is when you're trying to click a point, retrieve the data, what's the sample size you want. So basically, um, Earth engine is like uh, the scale you need, to, when you extract data, you need to specify the scale. So by default, it's going to get just the map scale depends on how you zoom in or zoom out. And the plot type, for example, by default is line plot, but you can change to bar plot, scatter plot, or histogram, uh, and also overlay. For example, you have a line here. Do you want to overlay those lines? Um, if you want, you, you, you can certainly do. And you can also change the size, the width, um, or the height of the, the plot. So now, for example, we can just uh, simply change, for example, here to uh, just explore the first one. Uh, here, bar change to bar plot and add marker cluster to two. So let's just execute this line and then we can come back to here. So this uh, bar plot and then you just need to click because there's no data. So if you change to this one here, now you see this one is a bar plot. Okay, so but it's pretty dense. You can also customize if you want using like uh, using a um, map plotting. So if you change to, for example, lens set seven, right? You can do it in here. You can do it in here, right? So, and you can also change to a uh, scatter plot if you want. So for now, I'm just to remove this one. I can change, for example, to scatter. And if you execute again, then let's come back to here. Now you can change to scatter plot, okay? You can also do histogram. For example, just change to hist. And now if we use the Hyperion, if you check this one, there's no data. So if I click here, oh, this one is still the plot type. Okay, there might be some bugs, but uh, I need to look into the, the, the detail. Okay, so this for how um, using some simple data set, you can add your own data and then just use this. So keep it in mind, this the plotting only works with uh, imagery. You will need to have a uh, EE.image or EE.image collection. 
it won't work on a free to office collection. So those are the things you need to um, keep in mind. You can also use the so-called overlay. So I'm going to DD this one. And for example, hit overlay equal to two. That means um, you can have the port and then overlay those points together. So right now, I use the overlay and then let's come back and check again. Right, so those lines will be add all together. So all the points. But if you start over again and then clear uh, all the previous one, you should be able to have a much better visualization of um, the points. Okay, so lastly, I'm going to show you that uh, there's a simple demo that you can use. So similarly, you can create a map and then just use the function called prop demo. And this one automatically give you uh, some idea about what it looks like. So very similar to what we uh, saw earlier. But this one just give you, for example, I use some random points and just simulate that you uh, click your mouse on the map and then shows you, for example, 20 spectral signatures randomly selected within the US. Sometimes if the point is outside, you're going to see an error message in here. But um, this is all you have. Okay, so that's all for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and uh, subscribe to my channel. Otherwise, I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.